on the Kansas City, Missouri side for the Missouri schools, they were protesting at the uh, the, the the fountain, the Freedom Fountain, uh, which used to be the Nichols Fountain, um, for not getting back to school. Have you noticed much of a difference between different areas? Can you kind of say, okay, we kind of feel this is going to be this way here and this is going to be this way here? Uh, I think, you know, honestly, I don't know. I don't – it's hard to speak on both sides of them. Um, I think the natural feeling is, yeah, in your more rural areas, uh, they're ready to get back after it. There's not – well, number one, school could be anywhere from 150 to 300 kids um, as opposed to 2,000. Um, and not so many I think cases naturally – right? Yeah, well, the, yeah, that, that's what I mean. It's like so as a, as a parent or a teacher, you obviously are – Naturally, I feel more comfortable going into a building with 300 kids than I would with 2,000 kids. I think that common sense would tell you that's what some people are thinking, and they're probably not wrong to think that. But at the same time, I think uh, whether you're in a rural committee, uh, community or an urban community, the leaders of those buildings, those districts, are, I think, equipped uh, to make the right decision for who, for who they represent – and not only make the right decision, if it's if it's to go open the doors back to school, then they're going to put in the right things in, in a building to mitigate the risk as much as possible with this virus. I think we should all trust those people that are making the decisions to do that. I don't think that differs from anywhere in the state, whether it's rural or urban. I think people trust their leaders and, and or at least have given valuable input to make the right decision. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's important that people understand, you know, the decision that came down last week of, you know, the August 17th date, that doesn't mean that every case of school has to start football, volleyball, you know, golf on that date. That just means that's the first day that you can do your, your organized practice for that sport. And so if our leaders in Shawnee mission push that back, which I hope they don't me personally, uh, you know, but if they choose to push that back or the Sunflower League, for example, decides to push that back and then maybe cancel a game or two, you know, er- early in the year, then, you know, that's their decision to make. But you guys basically said, like, we're, we're going to keep fall as normal as we can here, right? Yeah. Well, what we've done is exactly how you say it. Uh, the decision was made that, August 17th has always been the starting practice date uh, for, for 20, 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're keeping that. So if your school uh, is comfortable with having uh, practice, uh, you know, it was put pretty well in, in the board meeting by a board member. He, you know, he stated that, you know, for the most part, your D linemen have been working out together all summer long. Mm-hmm. Uh, and probably after they work out, they go hang out in the basement together, you know, playing video games or something. So it's some, and some school districts may not start school August 17th, but those same kids that have been together all summer, they're just, now they're just going to continue doing what they've been doing all summer. So it's not like we have all of a sudden interacted with a whole bunch, a whole new community of, of kids. Um, so that's one way to look at it, but you know, just on a basic point of view, August 17th is when practice can start if you want it to start and then we will continue with gameplay depending on what sport you participate in after that. And that has not been pushed back. Yeah. And you know, we, uh, one, one point I've made to some people that, you know, are saying, well, how can you start sports before you start school? And and I'm like, well, one, I mean, it, it is a smaller group, a smaller population. You know, like you said, some schools have 2000, maybe a little over 2000, students and you know you don't have near that in in athletics and you know we have safety procedures that we're putting in you know just like the school will um you know for example today during our uh conditioning time which really most of the summer we've been doing it you know if the kids are not moving around or running then they're wearing a mask uh coaches I, i coached the entire time today wearing a mask during my individual period, you know, during um, some kind of group stuff and, you know, wearing a mask. That, it's not fun, but, 
you know, if that's what we have to do to have a season, you know, then, then that's what we're going to do. And, you know, I mean, all of our coaches were in mass, all of our players. So, you know, and I mean, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Well, and Jeremy, I think uh, I think Gary had to spend a lot of money and have a special mask made that fits around that big, big, huge <laughs> beard of his. I was going to say, I've got, you know, not near the – the the situation he's got going on but just wearing my mask for a little bit drives me nuts with my beard i can't imagine that oh uh, um yeah it's it's not fun and you know my (laughs) wife's been giving me a hard time for about two weeks now saying hey weren't you gonna get into the barber and get that thing cleaned up weren't you gonna clean that up (laughs) you know so i think i think she's trying to tell me it's it's time so, well, you know, when it when this all started, they made us quarant- you know, the governor's order quarantined us yeah. home for a couple of months and I I shaved off my beard for the first time in 3 years, I think, and it was like, why in the world did I do that? I can't I can never do that again. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> yeah. mine mine was really crazy when we came out of that, you know, that first initial <laughs> quarantine cuz I was supposed to go to my barber, I think like that first week where everything got shut down. So I was already do a trim and then you know, it went another couple of months there. and It was not It was not looking good. So, <laughs> Jeremy, uh, when I talked to you last week to ask you to come on the show, you had, uh, I asked you if you knew Jason West, and you said, yeah, you were getting ready to send him an email. And I'm sure it's probably off of kind of what you guys went over that day, the, the day before. But how much um, energy and time do you guys take from state to state? Um talking and, and trying to come up with game plans i knew i know he knew that the governor shut you guys down in the state of kansas whenever basketball was going on so i mean how much communication between say oklahoma arkansas missouri i mean you know the, the connecting states do you guys share with each other and try and help each other out well this year more than ever i can tell you that um when when this all started in march um, there's probably a group of us in this Midwest states and then even some area and some of the Northeast states that run an email chain and, and about every decision that every state was made as far as, well, we just canceled basketball or we just canceled spring sports or we're delaying this or, or our state is now in this situation. That was getting shared real time uh, between people like me and Jason that have our duties in those states. Um, so we we were definitely being very in tune. You know, you could be sitting in a staff meeting here in Topeka and just get a notification that, hey, Ohio just had to uh, cancel their spring sports, you know, or, or, or various legislative uh, happenings were going on in other states and, um, like when when the Michigan governor suggested that Michigan should uh, swap uh, fall and spring sports, she kind of called them out on a press conference and said that. And I just remember, I you know, I shot off an email to my counterpart in Michigan and I said, "Well, how's that feel to be told what you're going to do?" Um, and you know, obviously that took them by surprise. They didn't have a lot of wise words to say back. Um, but since that time, I can tell you they are not going to do that. Um, but interacting with other states happens about daily now, um, just because it's it's good to be in tune with with what other people are hearing. And it, you know, we we cheat and steal a lot in this in this world. Um, and a good is from we're not trying to invent the most unique thing um, because why do that when another state's already doing it and doing it really well? Um, it's a great idea. We're gonna we're gonna steal that because you don't have a monopoly on good ideas. You know, so. Um, you know, obviously our executive director even communicates even more as those executive directors have had, you know, I know weekly conference calls just to see what novel ideas out there and, and what you, like I said, what you can steal and, and make your own. We did get a few questions, um, you know, from Twitter, Facebook, you know, when I put out that we were having uh, you on the show, but, uh, one person was just asking about, uh, you know, stadiums and access, you know, for fans. How, how is that going to, is that going to be left up kind of to the local school, the local area on how many fans can come to the game, if any at all? Yeah, for the regular season, we will allow, uh, well, the regular season is 
the local school's uh, property, well, for lack of a better term. Um, so, so they can determine who they allow in their stadium and, and how they're to orchestrate that game from a spectator standpoint. We've encouraged um, schools to reach out to their local health departments, their uh, county health departments, that is, and, and see if they have any input about how many can be in this stadium. Because we know each stadium is not created equal. Uh, the Olathe uh, District Stadium is certainly not uh, the, the stadium in Russell, Kansas. Um, so how can we accommodate the population for a Friday night football game or for a Tuesday uh, volleyball game indoors? Because we know every gym, gym is not the same as far as ventilation and some some I'm sure there's some volleyball teams that don't play in AC. So uh, for the regular season, we're leaving that up to the local school district's decision on what they want to do with spectators. Uh, when it comes to postseason, we have not made any decisions on spectators mainly because. Uh, this it's too premature to do so uh, because we can make a decision today on August 3rd and next week completely have to rearrange that based on new information. So I don't think you should expect a decision as far as spectators come from us from state champions for a couple months later from, so um, just because there's no, no reason to get in a hurry with it. What, uh, what kind of response are you getting from the volleyball um, coaches since they're the ones that are having to practice outside and that's the, out of the norm for them. Well, I think it's like what coach mentioned here earlier is um, it may not be ideal. It, it's not something that I wake up every day looking forward to doing what we're, we've been doing, but we know we have to do it to have a chance to play. And, you know, we, I think one of the considerations we have out there for volleyball is, uh, you know, after a set, you switch sides. Well, we're, we're basically saying, you should probably refrain from doing that because it doesn't make sense to dirty up one bench just to go across the, the floor to dirty up another bench. Um, so I'm sure there's traditional volleyball people that will just not like that one bit. You know, it's just not, that's not what we do after sets. That's not part of my plan. That's not what makes us successful. But if you take a step back and go, if this means I can play this week, next week, and a couple weeks to come, yeah, that's worth, that's worth me doing. Yeah, it, and it's, you know, in, in all the sports, I think, you know, it's just kind of the word that we, we've had to learn is adapt. You know, you just have to be ready to adapt and you have to be flexible. And, you know, I mean, our, our head coach has, has talked to us about, you know, as coaches, you know, the possibility of not having locker rooms for varsity contests, you know, because having to go in and, and wipe and clean all those things down, uh, you know, is, is – that pretty is are you guys also kind of leaving that up to each each local school if if they're going to open those locker rooms and those facilities yeah at the time being yes um i think it goes back to the the point i made earlier is um the locker room that i grew up in 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 st george kansas is is different from the locker room that you're coaching in now probably um mm -hmm. because each each case is different um each situation is different it doesn't make uh, a lot of sense to definitely completely do away with that because you could have a situation where the locker room is, is perfectly fine um, as far as ventilation goes. And, or if you said uh, there could be a situation where some schools, there's no other option uh, to go anywhere else uh, but their locker room. So it's just Kansas is so uh, what makes us unique and a cursing and a blessing, I guess, is because we're so diverse as far as, uh, the di the population densities go and and just the makeup of our schools. Yeah, and um, is Keisha going to require any kind of testing um, for athletes and and members of that are participating in activities? No, we will not require testing. We have screening protocols that will be followed um, to the best of their ability and. I think the, the Kansas Department of Education did a really good job as far as we, we had a pretty good screening plan in place that we, we hope schools would follow. But then the Kansas Department of Education came out with even even more. And so, you know, we basically said, hey, you're going to be following this every day just to get in the building at, for school. So let's just keep on following that for our activities. Um, what do you see foresee for the future with uh, fans and uh, attendance? 
Well, I think it, it'd be natural to say 